Board of Selectmen meeting for Sunday, uh, Sunday, Monday, September 11th. <laughs> it's already been, it's been a long Monday. <laughs> um, and just before we get started, since we're, we're actually doing this on September 11th, um, maybe we should just do a, a moment of silence in honor of um, that day. Okay, um, I should, probably should have added to all of our recent hurricane victims and earthquake victims. It's been kind of crazy out there lately. But here in Sunderland, there's a lot going on, but it's a little quieter and a little, a little safer, knock on wood. Um, so I see our first appointment is Mr. Ron Rodak here at, uh, for our 300th anniversary townwide tag sale. And yes. I know a lot of people are uh, getting ready for that. So, so what's up? Well, I've been working on it for a month already and everything, and I'm very happy to say things are progressing pretty good. Oh, good. And I'm here to say, you know, since we have the budget cuts for the town, and since the funding was decreased for the Sutherland 300th anniversary, you know, we're trying to raise money for that 300th anniversary, yeah. all the events and everything. And so I'm here to see since October 7th, we're going to have the tag sale. We can waive the fee for everybody in town since we're doing so much advertising and everything, hoping that in response, when they sign up, that they would donate some proceeds towards our anniversary festivities next year. And, you know, by waiving the fee. Yeah. Um, what, you know, like the license we'll get, fee? People will get a few extra dollars for the anniversary. And the church already said in town that anybody that wants to set up over there and use their parking lot free can set up and everything. Okay. And I figure maybe if we charge $10 a table or $10 a space for anybody to set up there, you know, yeah, it's like a vendor right fee. In the center of town, you know, it would be a good thing. And um, maybe have you all selectmen advertise on your show program here. <laughs> um, you know, <laughs> um, to help us out. I don't know how big the audience is, but you know. I think you get a good response, you know, and you get a lot of people that watch, watch you every Monday. Yeah. Um, yeah, because you could do it kind of like, a, it's almost like in an antique show or a flea market or something. You pay a vendor fee to come in and set up and then, okay. Of course, you know, by people not having to go out and get a fee, um, go to the police station or anything and, and get a fee, you know, pay their fee and everything, um, just set up at home. And if once they register, it will be put on a map on TV, on the website, yeah. saying exactly where to go so people from all over would know so where to go. And I guess um, a lot of people come from the eastern part of the state just for the tax sales, especially in South Deerfield. And so since South Deerfield is having beers at the same time, we're going to have it. And so, you know, we'll get a lot of their traffic. Pick up the traffic, yeah. What, uh, what do you guys think? Well, I think it's a fine idea, Ronnie. I just uh, texted or emailed Tom Z to confirm the dates mm -hmm. for you. Okay. So if, if he if he gets back to me or or you, I'll try to get to you. Um, I think it's fine. Um, I know Ronnie uh, stepped up uh, after the last one. Thought we could have a little bit better. Um, turn out with some better publicity and such. So Ronnie stepped up to the plate and he's uh, driving it. Uh, so thank you, Ronnie, we appreciate that. He's reusing signs, he's getting, uh, he's talking about it all over the place. Um, and I think it's it's better advertised this time. Um, I think that'll big, help. I'm getting a big response um, through the restaurant and through the post, post office. I tell everybody that comes in and everybody's gung ho for it. And plus they're gonna have a lot of time to prepare for it. I think the last time they 
didn't have much time, only a week or so. Plus, it was a bad day. It rained that day, and there was a lot of things going on. You know, you had the Derby, you had a lot of events going on the first Saturday of May. So I think, you know, with this extra time, people are going to go for it. I think you got, the, you got a good time. It's a foliage time. You get people driving around or out and about, especially on that Saturday. So I think it's a good day. And I'm going to advertise on the beer radio station. You know, yep. they said they're going to do some free publicity. Oh, that's and good. In fact, I'm going to um, the Springfield Union Wednesday to see about doing an article and for ha having the kickoff as a tag sale. I think I think with all the work you're putting into it, you should also go get some money from Deerfield also, because they're going to they're going to piggyback on all your hard work, Ronnie. So make sure you go yeah, get them true, and make a donation. True. Make sure you get a donation little, from little them as cut. well. Okay. <laughs> So I guess um, the chief said that he needs something in writing from the three of you to um, not go around. But I just want to know. So how, how, so how do you, how do you want the motion to? Re so what about the people that want to piggyback but not uh, donate? How are you going to handle that? If people don't register, don't register. Then the police could maybe go there and say you didn't register and everything, and you need to pay up, pay the fine, or get. Up. Uh, come on, get out of jail free card. Yes, get out of free. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know they money. could. Yeah, you could have somebody print. Like, cause normally do they do they give you a printed sheet or anything? What I, what I want to do once the people register. Yep. With a market on the map and put it on the town website, right. the 300th anniversary, <laughs> with their addresses, where to go to for the tag sale. Yeah, so basically they could check. So if he's got an address that's not on there, yes. then, okay. Get a list of participants specific yep. to the event. Yeah. And they're like, oh, you're not a participant. So uh, I'll make a motion to, okay. to waive tag sale, Permit the tag list. sale fee yeah. to those that are properly registered with the uh, 300th committee. Yeah. How's that? I'll Sounds second. Good. All right. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Three to zero on that. There we all go. Right. How's that? And then just keep your fingers crossed for good weather. The one thing that's not oh, in yeah. our control, oh, you know? Good weather. Hope for that. <laughs> but isn't it always sunny in October? Uh, you know, I hope so, I'll tell you. <clears throat> yes, it is, right. So that's, that'll be good, though. Yeah. And you're right, Bill, because there's going to be a lot more people up for the uh, the autumn. And we tend to get a lot of traffic for that. Yep. This is going to be um, veterans, no, Columbus Day weekend. <clears throat> yes, and that's usually the biggest foliage weekend. So, mm -hmm. oh, all right. Well, that's good. All right. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Ron. Okay. Our next item is minutes, 821. I'd like to make a motion and a comment, Mr. Rook, Chair. Yeah. Um, I just want to remind everyone, because I actually had a couple people had said something to me the other during the last couple of weeks while we we've, we've been uh, not having a meeting uh, about um, what we what we call quote unquote nuisance houses. Yep. If, if and again, the few years ago at our annual town meeting, we had voted some bylaws into effect that gives the police and people. Um, some, I'm not going to say control, but some actions that they can that can be taken. The chief, uh, um, through our town administrator, they they are the chief and his uh, his uh, officers are very aware of the statutes now. Um, they know the enforcement. They have a plan, um, and sometimes, as most of us know, sometimes. Enforcement has to start with education. So just uh, and, and they say, what do you mean by that? I would I would say just like sometimes you may have been stopped by the police for slightly exceeding the speed limit, and most likely if it happened in Sunderland, um, and you were a neighbor, you were um, politely reminded what the speed limit is in town. Um, I'm not saying that exclusively, but they most of the time the police like to work deal with education so I would say if you have a concern about a house uh, um, that's too noisy or, or any kind of concern or there's garbage out in front of it whatever um, calling the police we do have 
uh, the police have tools in their toolbox to address those issues. Um, so you can call us, the Selectman's Office, or the police, and they can they can hopefully help you with that. Do a second on that? Yeah, second on motion. Okay. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Three to zero on the minutes. Board of Selectmen updates. Um, so, just so everyone knows, the 300th committee had a meeting last Thursday, and, and um, things are pretty well set as per the, um, the some functions are becoming clear as to the dates. So the, it appears that the weekend of June 16th, June 16th will be the parade, um, uh, will be on June 16th. I would say if you have a, a local um, organization like the Congregational Church, Men Clubs, Women Clubs, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, and you want to float, or just con you know people that want to take part and want to build a float, um, I would contact Michael and Brenda Washnikavitz. They have they do have a place that you locate them on the uh, town webpage um, to register your your float or participation. Um, they would be interested in, in talking and hearing from you. Um, that night afterwards, the night of the parade, there's going to be a fireworks display. Uh, the town um, has received a very generous, um, That's right. um, very, very generous uh, donation uh, that the committee will talk about in the very near future. Um, there's also going to be food um, between the parade and the fireworks. There's stuff going on Friday night. Um, I believe there's like a birthday cake contest. Um, <laughs> there's there's stuff going on that Sunday. Um, so that weekend, the 15th, 16th, and 17th of June are going to be very busy. But that doesn't exclude all the other things that are that are happening throughout the year. Um, there's the uh, the ball. There's the uh, formal ball that's going to be occurring. Tickets, I believe, are going on sale December 1st. Uh, unfortunately, they're limited in number because of the uh, the venue can only hold so many people, which is going to be done at the Blue Heron. The um, uh, the parade committee um, has has a few things that they want to bring forward. Um, they're still gathering money, uh, soliciting money. The um, merchandise, souvenir, they just voted some money to purchase um, sweatshirts for the uh, 300. So those should be coming in soon, so look forward to that. Um, and, and things are still, still ramping up. So just like everybody to know that. Um, and, and hopefully our, we will have a, a very successful year. Um, starting in January, January 1st, so. Busy year for the It'll be a busy year for the town. Yep. That's right. <clears throat> um, I think I have is uh, we've got a branding and Wayfair meeting next, next week that we've got, and I guess we're gonna be, we're gonna have to schedule a complete streets meeting. I know that there's a lot going on with that because we've gotta wrap those projects up by the end of the year. So we'll, you'll be seeing some improvements out and about in the town on that. Um, and then we have to schedule a personnel committee meeting to talk about some fun things that we were working on last year that we need to finish working on. So, uh, and there's been a lot been good that's been going on too. We haven't, you probably haven't seen us in our meetings because we we've been doing our every other week schedule. Plus we had the Labor Day holiday in there. So, but there's still a lot going on. There's a lot in flux right now um, with our streetlight programs and things like that. So there's a lot going on. So. More savings to our budget coming. Not huge, but still, that's good. Uh, directly, Mr. Chair, we have a financial planning meeting tomorrow morning at 7.30. Uh, Kickoff meeting, Sherry's uh, put together a composite of a uh, cross-section of the financial team, a member of the board, finance committee, accountant, et cetera, talk about our practices and how we can improve those practices. Uh, and then tomorrow night, there's a capital planning committee meeting and that we plan on uh, taking action on a uh, building survey, which is uh, mm -hmm. a building survey is going to be executed through a 
granted or executed through the, the Franklin Regional Council of Governments, and that'll be a good thing. And we've been over the last couple of weeks fielding, interestingly enough, as you said uh, earlier, things don't uh, just stop. The 120 North Main project, our applicant, our uh, sponsor is uh, fielding questions uh, from DHCD and our office has been able to provide some information about that. And I find it, if I could, go slightly linear. Mm. Uh, after all the work the town did um, with respect to the Sugar Bush Meadow projects, the same agency that approved that project is asking us why we didn't help endorse that project. So we've answered some of those questions um, and it was very interesting juxtaposition I think the answers today, and I'm paraphrasing, and Sherry can add some, add some uh, structure to it. But you know, we, we fought that because of a whole host of reasons. That that is all public airing. There's no hairstyles and attitudes. It's all public airing. That said, once the Supreme Judicial Court went on its decision, the town has in no way, shape, or form stood in the way of that project. And so I find it interesting that the DHCD would ask, you know, what we're doing to help encourage it. Uh, right. Meanwhile, and I say this again, meanwhile, you don't have a builder that's knocking down the door trying to yeah. execute permits. I was, was going to say, so, nobody, exactly. <laughs> it's, I, I just find it interesting. The line of questioning I find interesting from the awarding agency. That I is. also appreciate the fact that it's the same agency that we have to work through for the 120 North Main project. And it's very, very important that we keep our, our history, you know, um, very clear. Yep. So those those questions have been very interesting to me. <laughs> Tom shaking his head. Oh, well, you should have seen me the first yeah. time. <laughs> I I I think uh, I I in, in I just I just want to revisit mm -hmm. ten years ago. Yep. Um, on that whole project, we still don't have basic question answered about mm -hmm. about that project that is absolutely you correct, are correct. I, I, yep. and, and we, we've never we've never seen a de definitive plan of what 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 it's going to look like and 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 how many how many uh, buildings and how many i mean we, we've heard rumors and we, design, we, 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 we we've seen i would say and, well, and unfortunately part of my job has to look at how we deal with a lot of projects and 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 when you see uh, the ten percent um, <laughs> wish right. you see you you see ten ten percent wish, then when you get up to seventy five eighty five percent ninety five percent complete, that's that's when you start seeing the final project. So you, your ten percent is just is an architectural is an is an architect's mm -hmm. basically rendition, and 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 then and then changing that changing that picture in one's mind to something that you can build maybe maybe totally different mm -hmm. maybe maybe it's possible maybe it's not but we've seen that um, we've seen it with um, the elementary school where we built the elementary school we saw it with the with the library and and I I'll, and I go back to comment on the library because the library were, were ingenious how they when they when they built the library they they worked into the ar architects uh, contract that they would redesign if it came in over budget, and guess what? It came in over budget, mm -hmm. and then they have to re they redesigned it on their dime, not the town's dime, mm -hmm. and and guess what? It was totally, totally different when they were got, when they got done. So there, I, I would say, if I if I had an opportunity to speak to great to to the wisdom, I would say. We did nothing wrong. We we just asked. We just asked for a plan. We just said, how, how do you plan on getting onto one sixteen safely? How do you plan to have if the unfortunately if the fire ever break out? How do you plan on fighting that fire effectively without loss of life? Um, we asked about wellhead protection. We asked about water. We asked about sprinklers. We asked about a host of things. Not. Just because they're good questions to ask, mm -hmm. and and, <clears throat> and so I, I well, and it's difficult because occasionally people will ask, oh, well, what's up with that? What's going on? Yeah, we don't know. Well, again, it's, 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 yeah. if I could, Mr. Chair, the same agency that is is overseeing the dis potential distribution of funds and approval is this DHCD, plain and simple. So that said, right? Yep. <laughs> 
I find it interesting that the in the discussion about affordable housing, when we're inside of our housing plan, either having passed uh, changes in the zoning bylaws to accommodate infill, or in the case of the town's effort to uh, secure and then put out the RFP for the 120 North Main, uh, that we're being questioned in particular about a project that is, is really not germane to the discussion, but it's important. To, it's also important, and I say this not to vilify the DHCD, on the contrary, they approved our housing production plan. We're hitting benchmarks in our housing production plan. Right. So read the plan again that you approved is what I would say. And then come back after you've yeah, done that. That's yep. just me being a stick in the mud. Uh, you know? Sorry, Sherry. No <laughs> she heard, she heard, it, like she it, heard yeah. it. She heard it a couple times on the phone recently. So, <laughs> thank you. Uh, you're welcome, Sherry. It's right. time, town administrator updates. I have a few project updates for you. Uh, we received the notice to proceed from MassDOT for the complete streets project, and that. projects under that um, grant will have to be finished by September 30th, 2018. Uh, so I'll see about uh, scheduling a working group meeting to discuss next steps and see if there's um, maybe a couple of simple projects that we can, we can do this season. Yeah, yeah. this season. Yeah. Um, the IT grant for the voice over internet telephone system, the data cabling portion of that project is scheduled for the week of October 23rd. Okay. Um, Petrella Cross Road is scheduled for resurfacing tomorrow. Oi. Yeah. And the wayfinding and branding kickoff meeting is uh, September 20th yeah. mm -hmm. at 630. Um, also, a couple of weeks ago, we had the four town administrators meeting with the school. Oh, yeah. um, we do that periodically. It was good. Um, we talked about the um, long-term strategic recommendations for optimizing use of school facilities in the Frontier Region project mm -hmm. that UMass mm -hmm. yeah. um, had started. And there seems to be some changes since the scope of work was initiated for that project. Changes in the need or changes in uh, the deliverable? Just changes in the scope. Got it. Um, for instance, the um, administration has moved into Frontier now, oh, yeah. and the building, yeah, I guess, is going to be marketed. Um, so one of the things that we talked about um, doing was recommending that we discontinue that project and maybe revise the scope. Um, so we wanted to bring that to our boards, and um, yep. Dr. Carey will be bringing that to the school committee as well, because I believe they have a $12,000 appropriation for that project. Yep. And the four member towns contributed 3,000 each. Um, so we just felt that at this time um, that we should maybe take a look at the scope of services. There was also a pretty lengthy delay and lack of communication in that project. Um, that, that we were sense. concerned about as well. So reassess it. Right. Yep. Um, and then last but not least, uh, at our last meeting, we took the memorandum of understanding for the streetlight retrofit mm -hmm. project under advisement. And so I just wanted to see if the board was ready to move forward or had any questions that I could answer. No, I had, um, a, chance, I had a chance to read it over and I absolutely no issues with the MOU. I mean, yeah. it's, it's plug and play. Yeah, and they did. They changed the um, timeline and the milestones to more accurately reflect what I think will happen mm -hmm. as far as town meeting time. And mm -hmm. and again, that can be revised if need be. It's just um, this will reserve the grant portion of the project and allow us to apply for the utility in incentive. Mm -hmm. Um, MAPC will also handle the design and the audit of the 63 lights, and oh, they'll actually kind of ride them out, yeah. make sure there's 63, <laughs> the 63, you know, right log, yeah. log them, and, and and all of those things. So it's a it's a pretty good bang for the buck. Um, it, and again, the savings for that project is about six thousand dollars. So there's like a two year pay payback. That's pretty short. Yeah, yeah. that's good. Yeah, and having MAPC run essentially run run the elements of the project, yep. it makes it turnkey. Yep. And and, for, and sometimes I wonder if you almost have to look at it differently in terms of payback. If you've got the money to buy it up front, mm -hmm. then it kind of, you know, it's. I wonder sometimes if we need to think about things a little differently because we always go by that, oh, how long does it take me to pay it back? Sure. But we don't apply that to like, oh, I'm going to go out to a nice meal tonight. You don't apply a payback schedule to that, you know, mm -hmm. so it's kind of, it's interesting. It'll be good. 
I would that I, I'd make a motion to enter into the MOU between uh, the Town of Sunderland and the Metropolitan Area Planning Council, on the, specifically on the streetlight inventory and uh, replacement program. Second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, three to zero on that one, Sherry. And again, it's important to bear in mind, if I could, Mr. Chair, that some of this comes from green communities money. Yes. Yep. That's another another good benefit to participate in that. All right. And then next we have a recommendation from Van Van Dalsen on the Veterans Memorial Benches. Van's recommending that we approve an offer by Mr. Halla to restore the Veterans Memorial Park benches. And he's going to um, essentially restore all the wood on them and maintain that and put a uh, new coating of stain. And is it a, I don't know if it's a, it's historically been an oil. Or like a, historically been an oil. Oil, yeah, yeah. like an oil based. And that, that's, they've been doing fairly well given the weather. So, yep. yeah, so that's good. Motion. I will second. Yeah. And appreciate also uh, the committee's work to continue that uh, keeping that Veterans Memorial as pretty as it is. Mm -hmm. it's been, I noticed there was a branch down or something that had to get taken right. care of too. So, yeah, that's, that's been it's a nice, nice little section there. Uh, all those in favor? All right. Aye. Uh, opposed? Okay. Three to zero, sure. Um, Dan's recommendation for that. <clears throat> and I think that's it. Unless we have any public comments. FCAT, what do you say back yeah. there? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, in times like this, you need a button to hit for the crickets. <laughs> out, <you know? laughs> Good point. Uh, all right. Um, the Motion to adjourn. actually, you know what? I'll just say our next meeting will be uh, in two weeks from tonight, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, any readings for this evening? Uh, no, sir. I didn't okay. come prepared. The uh, the one thing I'd like to add, David, yeah. to the nine nine eleven comments. <clears throat> okay, mm. I, I just um, that really um, began, quote unquote, our, our war on terror. Um, and it's been 16 years that it's been ongoing, and I, I would I would just like to add to your a little bit about mm. the uh, the men and women in the service and those uh, that have deployed and who have fought and who have uh, participated, but also for all of the innocent as well. Because um, there's been a lot of collateral damage, yes. and I, I would just, uh, I, 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 you know, we've we've had um, very a, a number more than can count families that have been separated and lost loved ones. And I just like to add and remember those people as well. Yeah, that's a that's a good point because we. we generally do a good job of remembering that those in military service in, in, in cases like that. But you're right, there's there's all the civilians and the other people who are innocent well, you think about pulled the mom, into it. You think about the mom and dads. Yep. Um, we, we, in, in our area, we lost uh, Sergeant Blander. Um, and I, I mean that, that was very difficult um, for his family. Um, and, and sometimes we forget. We I don't know if we forget, but we don't under sometimes we don't understand the prices that are that are paid by a lot of different people. Yeah, and I just like point. to I just like to to add that. Yeah, I appreciate um, that. So we're a lot to today. We're our country is a lot different today than it was 16 years ago. It is. Yep. Uh, we have a motion to adjourn. Second. <laughs> Third. All right, well, one of those was a first. Third. Third. <laughs> well, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, thank you. Thank you. <laughs>